It's showtime, a-holes. Time to strap yourself in and brace yourself for Muscle Asylum TV and Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to an episode of Muscle Asylum Radio slash TV. Uh, Gally, you look really far away. Come a bit closer to the camera. We've missed you. We haven't seen you in a while. Uh, we are joined by Jimmy, the newbie, Siddek, uh, Chris Alpha, Ethos Thomas, <laughs> and Mick, Quarantine Gaffy. No, no, no Gaffy, Gally. Um, so you're, what, what are you doing now? Where, where are you? You're in Sydney, Me. obviously. Yeah. So you're, um, what do they call it? I'm, I'm in the, where am I? I'm in the Sheraton, right in the city, in Sydney. So when did you arrive? Uh, Sunday morning. I think we landed about 8.30 Sunday morning. We went for a whole episode of, dude, I'll tell you what. See, you go for a different stage. You've got a police check-in. You've got you've got two police check-ins, one at the hotel, one here. Wait, for people that don't know, galley has been living in Texas for how long? Th- that stint I just did was 14 months. So 14 months in Texas, and finally yep. you're allowed to come back to, well, Australia. So you're just stopping off in Sydney. You've got to quarantine for two weeks, and then you've got to go to, back to Queensland. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, go yeah. on. Tell me about. Tell us about your ordeal. Yeah. Oh no. It's, just, it's well. It's hard enough getting back to Australia as it is. So um, we were very lucky to know someone through Flight Centre that got us on a flight. Um, got us here. There was only 42 people on the plane, like a 300 seater. They only let a certain amount come back at one time. Um, and then obviously th- there's only two hotels that I think doing quarantine at the moment. Um, do you so have to pay? Yeah. Do you have to pay for your quarantine yourself? Uh, luckily, th- I worked it. Um, yeah, that's three grand. But the new rule that Australia's just put in from the end of February is you have to pass a COVID test 72 hours before your flight, and if it comes up positive, you you lose not only your flight money but your your quarantine money, and then you've got to try and get a then you'll be bumped back a month or two for another flight. So they're going to keep that rule until next year. Um, okay, yeah. So and that's going to false positives. Well, the nurse that did mine, um, because I rocked up there pretty early in the morning, and I was a little, little bit phlegmy, and I, and I sort of said, I told her, and she goes, oh, she goes, these things are really sensitive. She goes, we get a lot of false positives. And I, I thought, so I, that was at 8 a.m. my test. By the time I went to the doctors, they did it all. I got a call at 9.30 that night. So all day I was stressing, all day. <laughs> what was it? Was it the thingy up the bum hole? No, no. It was, it was two things up the nose, and trust me, two things, things up the nose and one thing up the bum hole at the same time. She yanked it up the nose, but I had to do another test today. Like today's day two, so they do a test at the hotel. That one was in the mouth and both noses again. Um, actually, they could, could call any moment. They said if they ring before ten, it means you're positive. If you don't get a ring, you're, you're fine. So we, this could be on TV. This could be on the show. <laughs> positive, and then you get another one on day twelve. So if, if you get if you get tested positive now, do you have to quarantine for even longer again? If it comes up positive on day twelve, you're here for another two weeks. Oh, you, there's are. no no ifs or buts. Who's your, who's, who's your mate there? Who's your mate there, Chris? This is Evie. Say hello. Like... <laughs> it's, it's a gremlin. <laughs> where, where, where'd she come from? I, I go away. Chris gets a dog. Hey, hello. A lot, a lot's happened since you left, Gally. <laughs> well, I've seen a few things pop up on. <laughs> Jimmy's Jimmy got married, been divorced three times, remarried. It's going well. <laughs> <laughs> you start at the Bucks, if you like. <laughs> we don't want to start at the Bucks. We could start at my speech, your wedding speech. <laughs> I said, did you get it? Did you? Did I send you a uh, script of the speech that I read out at his wedding, oh, Gally? Read it. You no, no, but I'll send it to you. I'll text it to you. Okay. <laughs> see, there's something else. Obviously, Chris and I couldn't go to that. So that, that was something huge that we both missed out on because of the – obviously, I couldn't fly back from the US. Chris couldn't fly from Queensland. So, yeah. That's the major reason why I'm going to have another one. Well, no, not, a, not another wedding, another box. That's what he's yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he's more concerned about. The rebucks. <laughs> We're calling it a rebucks, aren't we? Yep. <laughs> you, I tell you what, you, you, you guys look sharp too at that wedding. Those, those suits were just, oh, mate. I've got one in the cupboard. I want to wear it. Like, you know. Well, I wore mine. I, wore, I re-wore mine. I had it in the wards night and I wore it again. But I, um, 
I couldn't figure out how to put the cufflinks on. So I had I had my arm, <laughs> my sleeves were all over the place the whole night. Yeah, but they were nice suits. They were good suits. But I couldn't figure out how to work the. It doesn't have a belt, so you had to tighten. You know how you got the straps on the side to tighten your pants. You couldn't I, use that either. I couldn't figure them out. I think I was a lot fatter at your wedding. Awards night. Hey. You would have looked a mess at that awards night. Oh yeah, it was disgusting. My pants were falling down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I look ridiculous. Yeah. What's um What's new with you, Christopher? We've got a lot to talk about, so we'll recap everyone's lives because it's been a while. So I'm just cutting off my emails because I keep beeping and it's put driving me crazy. Um, mate, just working. Um, busy period. Obviously, shows are on, so pretty much just head down, bum up. Four weeks of seven days a week and. Get a little bit of rest now, and then WBFs on another three and a half weeks, so we'll go again, and then, and then a little bit more of a rest, hopefully. But um, it's been pretty full on period. I so. think season B is going to be busy. How many, how many got people have you got? Well, not just guys, but female athletes also. Have you got um, inquiring about season B? I'm, I'm full. Wow. Yeah, that's a good yeah. sign. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. You know, we did well in the on the season A, and then there were some good athletes that um, didn't do season A that I, that I was coaching, um, purely for the reason that they just said I don't want to. Um, and they're pro card contenders, like legit ones, and they they sort of basically said, listen, I don't want to do this show and be caught in New South Wales. No disrespect, I just don't want to do a state show only. You know, I want to do the whole thing. If there's any chance that I'm going to be doing a state show and then get in quarantine and can't do the national show, I, I don't want to do it now. I'll wait. So there's a few of them. So they've, you've got them, and then you've got others um, as well, and then obviously new inquiries and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, with, with the amount of people that were in the same mindset as the competitors that you yep. just mentioned, yep, I'm pretty fucking glad we still ran the shows because that, that's what we're arming and narring about. So many people being in in that mindset and thinking, oh, you know what, they're probably going to wait till season B. At the point where we we, we had a promoters meeting and we spoke about whether or not we're going to run the shows and, and registration numbers were very low mm. and it was a Friday where we basically decided I didn't want to, but, but we, we did come to a general consensus that it was probably best to call them off. And that was a Friday. And then I spoke to Tony after, we don't need to make an announcement today. How about we wait till Monday? Cause this is when I think we had the outbreak in New South Wales. Yep. All the beaches. Yeah, I think it was around that time. But then, but Queensland shut down the borders straight away. Yeah. So it was, that, yeah, it was, was fucked. Was, yeah. yeah. And then I called Tony on the Monday, Monday morning. And I'm like, listen, before you do this announcement, I, I, I think this is a bad idea to call him off. And he was like, I actually thought about it all weekend and I was starting to feel the same. And, and that's how we kind of came to the decision to actually run the shows because we said, I don't think competitors and coaches are going to be annoyed if we called it off last minute. Because that, I think they will be more receptive to the idea that we held on for as long as we could. Because it really, it made no difference whether or not we called them off four weeks off or the day before, at the end of the day. People would have died for an extra few weeks. Well, it, it's not really going to make much of a difference. But people would have been more annoyed if they were called off early yeah. and then there was every chance of running the shows if borders open as they did. You had to give it a go, man. Like it, the way that it happened and the way it panned out, there was always going to be a chance that um, that border open, the border closure was going to um, be removed. You know what I mean? Like, and and in the end, look at the show. Realistically, like numbers may have been down a little bit. I don't know. I'm not involved. Like, I'm, I, they may have been down. I don't know. You'll clear that up. But when you look at the quality of what happened, there may not have been as much depth as what you know we probably will get in season B. But the people that won were pretty good, eh? Like, I mean, all round. I mean, you know, which obviously we'll go into. I suppose we're going to talk about it. But the quality was pretty high. The, the numbers. There were some standout guys. Great, great. Your show was unreal. That was so cool to see how that came along. Like, that's that's been a long time. When we say no, no, no real depth, I think with obviously with your show, Gretch, those lineups in each category, man, there were some good guys in that. It was funny because when we when we announced that we're actually going to run the shows. And we decided, no, nah, they're going to happen. So many people came out of the woodworks and not so much started registering, but started announcing the fact that they're actually going to compete. And I think people yeah. needed that clarification before right, they yeah. started posting pics and made an announcement they were actually competing. Pearson on you was competing the whole time. And he was asking Brad Dwight, same thing. Ariel, same thing. They were asking me questions. Um, but um, it's amazing how many people came out of the woodworks and were not prepping in secret, but 
were were doing what they had to do just in case shows ran, and then yeah. they ran, and we had record numbers in New South Wales, and that was that, that was a yeah. Did you guys talk about what if you got to maybe a week out before some of these shows they closed the borders? Obviously, you still would have run the the, the state shows, wouldn't you? Of course, you um, would run the state shows. He was looking at watches three months before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we kind of worked out a way to uh, run them a little bit more independently because our main, our main, well, well, the, basically the production team is all based in Melbourne, and they travel around from state to state. And at the time we ran the Adelaide show and the Queensland show, borders were still shut. So mm-hmm. Melbourne people from Melbourne, because I had an outbreak in Melbourne too. That's right. So people from Melbourne couldn't travel to Queensland or Adelaide. By New South Wales, uh, Gladys Berejiklian, she's a, she's a mad bitch. She she kept them open the whole time, but oh, I've got to think for her now. Um, but um, she's got a bit of she she's got a bit of a Chris Thomas nose, doesn't she, Gladys? Oh. But, but, look at her. <laughs> but yeah, no, but um, but they, they ran independently because because the production team from Melbourne couldn't travel to Queensland and couldn't travel to South Australia, so. We kind of worked out, all right, what are we going to do? Worst case scenario, if Tony and the team can't come, we'll figure out a way. But luckily for New South Wales, I didn't have to worry about it because they could travel to New South Wales. But we had we had a backup plan ready to go. Queensland show was real good, man. Like, I mean, it was done without, obviously, Tony and, and you know, and the crew. So, I mean, Joseph did the MC and they had the rest of the team come in. Man, the, the show went smooth. It was a good show. You know, John was happy. Everyone was smiling. It was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think same, the same was in South Australia. Obviously, uh, poor Josh was the only state where they couldn't run uh, the WA state show. But look, man, I'm, I'm, I reckon everyone's happy that we went ahead with it. All the competitors are happy, and they, they were good shows. That that Nationals, which obviously we're going to talk about, was just a fun – it felt like old bodybuilding days. Like it was just – I don't know. Happy. Everyone was happy. There was no dramas. Everyone was just chilled watching the show. Some yeah. some people were enjoying the day more than others. Little dramas. Little dramas. That's what I meant by some people were enjoying the day more than others. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, but like watching that overalls, Mick, and I know you were probably watching it from overseas. I don't know if there was a live stream or something that you could watch or Instagram. I don't know where you, where you watched it. Um, but that overalls <laughs> was a sick overalls because it went. It it's the when, when I spoke to Tony after it was like this is this is what an overalls should be like because it it was between two people post for post, post for post, you, and no, no one had no idea who was going to take that. You, you agree that Mike Pearson that competed at your show, fuck it, Mike Pearson that competed at my show that I... <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, Things would, haven't changed. Would have beat the Queensland Brad? No. Nah. No, nah, because he he won based on Brad won based on shape symmetry, and and it came down to the separation in his quads. Yeah, but Mick, Mick Mike had enough separation at your show to beat him at that show. His size factor. Yeah, that, that's where that's what I mean. How close it was. You, you you can't really say until you put them side by side because Gally, like being in the crowd. It was. Uh, I think I was standing, sitting next to Logan, uh, Chris. I can't remember who was in yeah, the but... all together. Yeah, and, and it was literally we were asking each other who wins this pose. Oh, I'll, I'll go, Mike. Well, we had Sam Pierce on the right as well, so there's a whole lot of us sitting there watching it. Yeah, Gable, Gable was there too, freaking out because he couldn't even figure out who 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 won. So it was a huge surprise that Brad won, mm. but it wasn't a surprise. Like yeah. it, it was like it was it was it was so it was a surprise because. On most days, they yeah. go with size. Bigger. Yeah, and the bigger guy on stage, yeah. I agree with what you said, and I was only able to watch Instagram photos and plus some live footage that was going up. But And it's always hard to tell from that sort of distance, you know, fr- from a from a photo taken. But Brad's structure looked amazing. You right. can't fold his structure. He, and he the looked- way his muscle bellies and insertions went on his physique. When I was watching that, I was probably tipping it more – Favoring more towards Brad because of that look. The yeah, only way when, when he turned to the side, Mick, honestly, man, the side chest, the side try, the depth of the hammies, the glute separation, everything, man. The side chest is incredible, man. Like, yeah. you know, we'll 
it got to a point watching it where I'm sitting there going, you know, like I, I like Mike. I mean, I saw him in the gym training here prior, you know, and I'm looking at it going, Brad wins more poses than Mike if you went pose for pose. But it was always that question of, will the super heavy win it because of the size? And that was always going to be the but, factor in the background, you know. But Chris, when you're talking about Brad wins more poses, you're probably talking about one pose on top. Like yes. it was, it wasn't, it wasn't like he wins. No, no, no. It was close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's, it, 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 it wins four from seven. All right, Mike Pearson yeah. without a pec tear, would he have beat Brad? I, th- I think the separation in his quads were the deciding factor, in my opinion. Yeah. It, 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 Mike's quads were big, full, grainy, veiny, but there wasn't much separation. And I don't know whether or not he filled out too much or he wasn't switching them on the way he knows he can. I don't know, but I do you know with, that. Yeah, you see with Brad too, like you said with his legs, he's got that insertion from the very top, mm. right down to that teardrop and the outer quad. And you look at potential as well. Brad's got potential to put on 20, 30 pounds of muscle on that frame Please. and still look good. So he can make a very slow transition into the pros. He's only twenty-seven. Give him a couple more years. It's going to be. I reckon Brad can have a really good shot at a few shows over there in a few years. How, how heavy was he? Does anyone know his weight? Uh, I mean, two eleven. Two eleven. Ninety-six. Just just over ninety-six. Yeah. I spoke to him straight after, and we spoke See, a bit. Brad backstage, like if you could look at someone who had fucking just nailed it one hundred percent on that day, he could not have done a goddamn thing better. No, nah, he couldn't have. He couldn't. So, have. Okay, he, he, well, break break the poses down then between him and Mike. Yeah. Oh, from so, memory, it was a bit hard. Like Mike's front double bicep was dominating, yeah, dominating. Yeah. Yeah. His rear lat spread was really good. That what what Mike, in my opinion, needs to work on, and I think he'll agree, is his is his hammies. His yeah. hammies, his his glutes dominate, dominate his hammies. That's and if you see yeah, him, yeah, if you see him walking, just walking from the, he's he's got the biggest ass I've ever seen on the bloke, yeah. and um. It's all muscle. It's literally so much dense muscle on both ass cheeks. It looks like a brain. But you know how from side on. So if you're yeah. standing side on and you're doing your, your quarter turns, side on, symmetry-wise, if you draw a line, your hamstring should stick out just as far as your glute. Yeah. Don't worry about the curve, but that's, 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 that's what judges are looking at, that line. And his ass was like this in comparison. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So... <laughs> That was my pickup from photos. His glutes were probably too big for his hammies. The pec tear, which you can't do anything about. He's just got to train around it. But you're right with his front double buy. I told him about two years ago, his front double buy looks like Arnold's. Yeah. The way it's shaped. His front double buy is crazy. And well, he can do that pec tear just quietly. I've, uh, that, that, um, what did you say? He can do something about that pec tear. He comes a newbie plug. There's going to be a few of those. There's going to be a few of those today. Fucking... <laughs> Fucking Jesus over here. Um, <laughs> turn, turn, water to, turn water to wine with that. But with that front double bicep, Gally, when when he hit that the very first time, the whole yeah. crowd went. The whole crowd went whoa. Like yeah. it was it was such an eerie feeling. The whole crowd had the exact same reaction. It wasn't like a outburst of joy or fucking wow. Look at that. It was like a Whoa. Like, it, it, was, it was actually was chilling. Sick, too. Hey? Like, the way he pulls that vacuum in as well, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah, man. No, Mike's got, yeah. I, I, it, I think, too, with Mike, he put so much pressure on himself to win this pro card, um, which wasn't a bad thing to do, but he, he went in with a goal and he wanted to really win it and put everything in this prep. So he's obviously come, come in with one goal in mind, it's to win his pro card. Where Brad, Brad was asking me two weeks before the comp whether or not he's allowed to compete in NABBA. He wasn't even thinking. Yeah. He's like, oh, look, I'm in shape. I might just do a few shows. He asked me, oh, you guys don't mind if I compete in NABBA? I'm like, nah. And straight after the show, I said to him, you're going to compete in NABBA now? <laughs> 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 but um, I think the fact that he didn't even think about the possibility of winning a pro card, he came in so relaxed. And mm. that relaxed attitude and demeanor on showed in his demeanor on stage where pose for pose in that overalls, he was getting harder and fuller, harder and fuller. And when they were side by side, he was slowly starting to win more poses. And I don't know whether or not, I wouldn't say Mike was stressed and was losing poses or flattening out or in any way, but Brad was certainly improving. Do you know what I mean? Pose for pose, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And he's such a top bloke. His routine. He had the porn he, star yeah. moustache, the, the porn star music, and yeah, his routine. Yeah. His route, he's, he's an entertainer. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's why I like. That's another reason why he'll go well because, mate, his social media will gain a lot of traction. Um, his question and answers. I don't know if you watch much of it on his Instagram stories. They're they're bloody hilarious. If you notice too, with his with his uh, with his posts, if he tags anyone or himself, you know how you got to type in your at Mark Richie Gretsch, like you've got to type in your name to yeah. tag in your stories. He'll hang it from his. Like he's, if he's doing a read of a bicep, it's between his legs, like it's his donger. So they, yeah. they, they, he'll, he'll turn it side on, and it's like hanging in between his legs. And he, he's just a funny cunt. Like he's just yeah. a he's just a funny bloke. Yeah, but he, it's I think it's really good for Australian bodybuilding. I think he'll be Absolutely. a good ambassador for the sport yeah, here in the show. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I love the rivalry he had with uh, Ariel. Obviously, Ariel taking the New South Wales show and looking amazing. But those two are obviously pretty good mates as well. So I think that's another thing that's making. The, the the sort of the atmosphere in the Australian community stronger. That that, that, re, that, of... that reaction that they shared with each other when um when Brad won the under hundreds, where they were both. I think Brad was obviously shocked because Ariel had won it the week before, but mm-hmm. um them hugging each other, they hugged for a good minute, I yeah. reckon, because it was, but Brad was so emotional, and um they both live in Canberra, they both had the yeah. same coach. <laughs> So they're obviously they're obviously pretty close. You, you guys that. were there then. What what was the difference between New South Wales to the the Nationals with Ariel and Brad? Condition. Yeah. Okay. Brad? Pretty much. Pretty much. What Brad was holding in New South Wales, he gave to Ariel. Yeah. yeah. But but do you know what? <laughs> uh, being at the New South Wales show, Brad could have easily have beaten Ariel at that New South Wales show. There were there, that was one of the one of the calls where. A lot of people said, you know what, I had Brad winning, but it could have went either way. There was no uh, wrong decision there. To Ariel, I gave him New South Wales handily. What? I gave. I think he won that like well, fair and square. But that's what I'm saying. There's there's people that think otherwise. So that's how close. That's it. Close. That, that was tanning yeah. each other backstage, which is a which I wish someone got a photo of it. You know, Ariel's tanning his back. You know, the boys are about to go on stage. It's a pretty cool moment, you know. And Andre and I are both watching, and that was at the point where Andre sort of looks at me and goes, that result's going to be reversed today. That's what he said just yeah. before that. Week. And, yeah. and they were tanning each other. It looked really evident because mm-hmm. uh, Ariel was very big and full. Maybe he, I was just saying, I don't know, maybe he could have been slightly too full. Um but Brad was tighter, eh? And just um, that the glute, the hammies, that whole bottom end just looked a hell of a lot different. Eh? Do you think? Do you think Ariel spilt over a bit? I, look, I don't know. I don't know. It, he was quite full. You know, they're notorious for bringing him in very full, which is which is good. But you know, sometimes if you miss the mark a little bit with the fullness, and you don't just slide down the other set, the other side of the hundred percent down to ninety eight, do you? You slide down to ninety or eighty five. That's what happens, you know. So and there was a week between those. Sorry. A week between shows, which yeah. is normal. Ariel looked amazing, man. I couldn't believe how much bigger he was. I mean, like, you always, when you watch Ariel compete, you sort of, in the past, he's always done heavies or something in the state show, and then he seems to suck in and just get under 90 somehow for the um, for the, the for the national show. But then this time around, I mean, the guy was like 96 or 97 kilos mm. in, in the heavy. So, I mean, he's put on a lot of muscle as well. He looked he, thick. I think, he, so I, I think he, I reckon he, he nailed it. He nailed it in New South Wales. I think that's the best he's ever, ever, ever looked in New South Wales. Yeah. Well, tell me, how close was he to Mike in the overall at, at New South Wales? No, Mike was Mike was much better at New South Wales than at Queensland. Yeah. In what way? What? What? Let's see. Like I, 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 I right? He was on, okay. He, the way I described it was, I think he was more on the. He was a little bit flatter than he was at Queensland. Yeah, but the flatness helped him out by making him appear more separated. He's a big dude, man. So him flat is still fucking full, right? But f- his, the flatness, it stopped the lookout of, like, looking at his pec because at Queensland, the difference in his pecs, especially the torn one, it was full. It was pumped up. When New South Wales, it was a bit flatter. And it, it wasn't as evident, right? And I was closer to the stage at New South Wales. So when they filled him up a little bit between New South Wales and Queensland... That, that that crispness he had went away, but the fullness showed off a little bit too much of what he shouldn't have been showing off, meaning his fucking super large glutes, 
they weren't as crisp. And the the, the pec tear showed off a little bit too much. In saying that, Gally, that, I'm telling you, that overalls, there was no wrong decision oh, if Mike had a won that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah like if Mike had a walked away as as Australia's new bodybuilding pro, there, is, there would not be one person sitting there that day would have said, that's that's the wrong call. That's no, how yeah. close it was. But And that's what made it so exciting and cool because yeah. that's it's, what an overall should be. How fucking boring is an overalls when you know... You, he's it's got, just obvious. Yeah, It's yeah. so well, obvious. So, so um, Brad weighed 211, so 96 kilos. I, I honestly think he's got the potential to get up to around 235, 240. And what, still, just because you've been living in the States for 18 months doesn't mean you talk pounds. Let's talk fucking kilos. You're back in Australia. What's 30, 235 pounds? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that is in kilos. <laughs> He's already, I'm surprised you're not talking in a Texas accent. Where's your fucking cowboy hat? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, they can't understand me in Texas half the time anyway. First thing I told him too, he, he when he got off stage, he... um. So I don't know what to do now, blah, blah, blah. Oh, actually, it wasn't off stage. It was a couple of days after. And I said, you're probably you're, it's, you're probably blessed that borders, international travel's closed because you're not going to rush into things now. You know what I mean? Like, you've got, you're a pro now. You really can't, you can't, there's nowhere to compete yet. It's going to be a while before you can actually think about year, competing. Right. So, I mean, he he's said not. What he do now? Hey. And next weekend, he should have gone on a bender. Oh, <laughs> he probably did. I, I think he. I think he loves a bit of weed. But um, he um, he. I, I, I said to him, look, just don't try and grow too quick because yeah. don't, you don't want to lose that shape. Yeah. Like don't don't do anything dumb. I, I, I don't think he will because he's he's very um. He, he he conducts himself as a professional even before <laughs> that. Like the the way he choreographed his routine and. And and the way he, just the way he conducts himself, he he conducted himself as a professional, so he's obviously a smart bloke. So I don't think he's going to be persuaded by anyone to try and grow too quick to look like a professional too soon. Does that make sense? Yeah, like, he'll he'll take his time, and and it, it, he's going to have, like you said, an awesome career, just as long as he just takes his time, grows in the right spots, <laughs> keeps that shape. Look like a professional now? Huh? Did you just say he doesn't look like a professional now? I said he conducts himself as a professional. No, no, no. You said he shouldn't rush to try and look like a professional now. Put him on a so, professional stage right now. Put him on a pro stage. Look like, I'm just asking the question, Dad. Get angry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get angry. Oh, fucking hell. I don't miss this. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, put him on a pro stage right now and in an Olympia lineup. How do you reckon he's going to go? I reckon. Exactly. Shut up. So, <laughs> realistically, <laughs> I think he beat Adam John Waite. <laughs> Am I wrong? And, uh, well, we, we all knew the show was going to go so at some stage. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the air on. I'm already sweaty. <laughs> I'm not even. No I can't even oh, yeah. That's That's fucking Jimmy gives me anxiety. <laughs> Let's get warmed up. Let's I'm putting it down to 19 and sitting at the high. Oh, fucking hell. Well, I, I guess if we're looking towards season B and if Mike... <laughs> and if... <laughs> Try to keep things flowing here. I just fucking... I just thought... I really wanted to get through this without editing anything out. <laughs> we're going so well. <laughs> Um, yeah, go on. What were you saying? <laughs> Gally? Um, <laughs> what was I saying? I was trying to baffle with something there. Season B. Season B. So, I, I take it Ariel, Ariel looks like he's definitely in. He's keen to keep going. Did he say that? I, yeah, he said that He said that on our asylum page a few times. He's in. I, I'm not sure, Mike. It's always hard for a big guy to back up, but let's say Mike's in it as well. Then you've got Big Timmy, who looks incredible. Oh, I just want to, I just want to say too uh, how well because you just mentioned Mike again how well he handled not winning and just the, his sportsmanship on stage by like the second Tony said like this was so close make sure you're going to give it another crack he basically said when's just tell me the date of the next show so yeah you're right there's good signs that he might be doing season B. Yeah. Mike has Pearson. Yeah. 
There you, you get go. what I'm saying? So he's doing season B. All right, and then you're talking about Timmy. Mm-hmm. You got Timmy. You got Sadiq. No, if Sadiq, Sadiq does it, Sadiq won't do it. Why? I just don't think he will. Oh, that's your your thing. I thought maybe you actually know for well, a fact. Actually, going oh. back on that because we probably shouldn't. Run. Was there any other standouts for you guys at the nationals? Um, we'll get crucified if we don't mention. Any gap? Oh, yeah, obviously Kristen Lea, women's physique. She absolutely okay. demolished it, and um, you know. I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going to find because she, she she was your client, wasn't she? Hundred <laughs> <laughs> um, percent. I'm going to check the girl's name, but the so they had the Bikini Pro show. I don't know whether or not you watched that either. The girl that won her Bikini Pro card, and I'm going to find her name right now because I feel very rude not knowing her name. Um, Jess. What did you say her name was? Jess something. Sorry. Jessica Jessica Johnson. There we go. Um, she looked wicked, wicked. And she actually um, she gave the pro girls a massive run for their money where there was a stage in the pro show where a lot of people were actually tipping her to not only place top three but possibly win. There's a good chance. So, yeah, she was a massive standout. Yeah. Um, who else do you want to mention? I'm having a look at the IPB Pro League page. What was I doing? Actually, the day the day of the Nationals, I got Craig, obviously from what he wrote, I got Craig to do the, the reporting because I was in Vegas with uh, my cousin. Oh, don't ever do that again. Mm. <laughs> or at least well, I thought it was pretty funny what he was doing. No? Uh, I, I think yeah. we're, we're kind well, of... I couldn't ask you guys. We're, 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 living, we're living in a day and age where... Calling bikini girls bimbos every five seconds. <laughs> God, I was waiting for. I was waiting to get a notification from Facebook saying your muscle asylum has been deleted. Go on. <laughs> hey, you know who was a massive standout, Gally? Um, the men's physique guy, Fabrizio dos Santos. Fabrizio. Mm. Dude, that whole top three lineup was stupid. That, that men's up. physique, men's physique now is really. Um, gotten exciting to watch, eh? Because they're proper pro physiques on stage now. Chris, yeah. were you there when when one of the guys uh, in men's physique walked past Gretchen Galley, right? And he walked past Gretchen and I was standing behind him. Here we go. And he walked past him and said, this guy's twice the size of fucking Gretchen. And Gretchen's a bodybuilder. I'm like, okay, Gretchen, that guy's twice the size of you. What are you doing? Hey, I'll, I'll cop it on the chin right now. Not my legs, but that that Fabrizio guy, he's a fucking genetic freak. He he is Olympia standard right off the bat. Yeah. 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 Are we talking the you know smaller? I'm talking board shorts. I'm talking board okay. shorts. The guy yeah. that won the board shorts category, Fabrizio. Yeah, yeah, no, I've never watched seen him backstage. The one with the tiny waist. Crazy <laughs> physique, massive arms, massive shoulders, like really nice but, shape. Uh, but the question is, okay, so obviously with every category, right? It's uh, they keep pushing the boundary, right? They always have. Because I mean, I remember a couple of years ago, if men's um, if men's physique was any heavier than about seventy kilos, they go, no, 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 they're too big, you know. And like now, obviously that was the other federation, but don't talk about it anymore. But um, like, I mean, the size of them now, like, is it just going to get to the point where these guys are just basically bodybuilders with no legs? Like, is that is that yeah, where getting? No, are, I, they I, gonna, are they going to put a cap on this and go, hang on a second? There's a point in time where we've got to stay. Um, to a certain size. What do you think? Well, they, they, the guys that were top three look like Olympia standard top three, cla- mm-hmm. uh, sorry, physique competitors, not bodybuilders. They didn't look like bodybuilders. They had that streamlined, lanky look, but were muscular, but not overly muscular. Yeah, they looked unreal. Yeah, yeah. Shame. Okay. Yeah, but they looked like uh, they looked like physique guys. I, 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 I think. Were you trying to say too, Chris? I think a couple of them. If you look at the pro physique, mm. they've, 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 they've still got quite well developed calves, the top guys. Yeah. And you can still see their quads, the teardrop and their hammies. A couple of the guys that we've had win or place, their legs are, I'm, I hate to say it, but it, they're atrocious. Yeah. They still should have some development in that lower body. Yeah, but they have not shoulder at all. That's, that's, that's an amateur. So that's room to improve, I guess. So if he has a, he, if he has a pro standard upper body, at least. He now knows what he needs to be working on mm. to be considered a competitive pro, I guess. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know. Like I said, the, I just the think Olympia level should have some legs anyway. I'm not knocking them. A lot of them do, as we know. But, but I mean, you're they... going to cover them with shorts anyway, so it doesn't matter if you've got legs. Oh, I'm thinking, do they get judged on legs? They should judge us hard. 
I think I think they should judge how the calf looks as well, and that because it makes that whole body. You can't just have someone up there with a fantastic upper body and like just these sticks hanging down. You can you don't... can tell when when those shorts are filled out and when they're not though. Yeah. You yeah. Like, if they're just Absolutely. flowing side yeah. to side, there's no quad there to fill legs. them out. Hmm. I said we're talking about their legs. Yeah, I want to talk about filling out their shorts. Yeah, I know what you're saying. You know what I was saying though too. I was thinking Jimmy was going to be the first to fucking pipe up and have a smart ass comment. I was surprised it's you. <laughs> uh, curious. No, I was curious. Yeah, you said they've got Olympia caliber upper bodies that's going to work on their calves. What if you've got Olympia caliber calves that's going to work on your upper body? Can you still keep pro card? <laughs> Is that? <laughs> give, give it a crack. See how you go. New category at the end of the year. Yeah. Calf category. You Why don't you? <laughs> uh, season B. So we're talking about bodybuilding season B. We've got okay. uh So we said Tim, we said Mike. But we're talking Mike. are we are we talking super heavyweights here? Are we talking bodybuilding altogether? Body, just generally who's in the hunt for the pro card, I guess. So is is James Newcomb competing? Because if James Newcomb competing, for my in yes. my opinion, hands down, see you later, new He's pro. He'd, he'd he'd be the top top. Josh Andrews competing? Is Josh What's Andrews that? competing though? Yeah, Look, with Josh, I've known Josh for a very long time. I feel as if he needs to earn his stripes before he even thinks about chasing that pro card. He hasn't competed before, let alone even won a national title. So I think, I think. I, I just thought we were talking about who's competing. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. No, yeah, we are. But Josh, yeah, no, but we're talking. Well, eventually, this is what we're talking about. All right, listen, Josh. Josh Andrews is competing. In, in what in what class? Josh will be uh, over hundreds or yeah, no, he'll be over hundreds easy. He's a heavy boy now. Um, but uh, yeah, that's no, but I, that's what I was thinking. If Josh is going to look his best, he wants to have ambitions of looking his best for his very first competition, not so much chasing that pro card. Why can't he have a fairy tale story first show pro card? He can, and if he does, good luck to him. I'm happy for him. Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> Is he going to beat James Newcomb? I don't know. Fuck, uh, don't worry about him. Don't worry about Tim. Tim's my pick. Will, will, he, will he beat Jim McKinnon? Now. Right now, anyone, anyone listening to, the, watching the show, <laughs> I'm putting money on Tim. Come get it. I want Tim to fly under the radar a bit. No. I want him to go full steam ahead. He's, in he's, everyone's face. You know why? Because he's strong mentally. He could ruin people leading up to the show. They can just drop out like flies. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> He might be the only one there. <laughs> How is he mentally going into a show, Chris? Because you've obviously prepped him. Is there a stage of prep with Timmy where he starts to get off track at all, or is he focused the whole way through and the way and he just follows the plan as is? He's he's really good. I think sometimes he he overthinks a little bit, like all of us do at the end. But the the honestly, the best I've ever seen him mentally was. Um, when he did Bendigo um, last year, um, he was throwing basketball hoops <laughs> two days out and then just goes, hey, I'm going to Bendigo, I'm doing the show. And that's how he decided to do the show. And then obviously... Uh, he so, um, Lucy? Yeah, that was one. Um, with the um, best comment I heard was Jimmy's missus saying how much bigger Tim is than Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I said, yeah, I know. If I wasn't his friend, I'd leave. <laughs> He's a fucking big human. Like, his photos don't do him justice. Like, when, yeah, when I was, he, no, he, looks, he looks heavier than the weight he is as well. Like, I mean, you know, at, at 120, he looks bigger than that. But I think the other thing people don't realise is that everyone sits there and goes, oh, Tim's so tall. He's actually not, man. Tim's like 5'11 or something. Like, I know. Not, that was depressing. He's not quite a big sport, and everyone needs to sort of realise that he's not tall. Like, I mean, he's tall. for He's tall-ish. I think people have got this idea that he's 6'1", 6'2", and stuff, and he's, he's actually not. He's 5'11", at 120 or plus at, at the condition he's at. He's a really, really big guy, and he's, his legs are probably the most well-developed legs going around, like, let's be fair. 5'11", mm. five, five still a foot taller than Jimmy. So I was going to say, 5'11", five, five is <laughs> pretty tall for a short guy. But yeah. I, know exactly, I, I know exactly what you mean, Chris, because every time I do catch up with him in person, I forget how much taller he actually isn't. Yeah, that's Because right. on his photos, he looks so much taller. He looks like... Yeah. But you know what, too? Like, in a shirt, he doesn't look as massive as he does when he's in a singlet. So we had, we caught up with dinner with him the night before. He was wearing yeah. a shirt. 
like, oh, yeah, he's a big motherfucker. And then the next day, I stopped off past the gym and he was training in a singlet. And I was like, you are a fucking big motherfucker. Like, yeah. just but his, his shape and symmetry alone, he's, he's got a tiny waist. Crazy, yeah. crazy muscle bellies. He's going to be very, very hard to beat. And he, he when just, he poses, he gets bigger as well. The only thing that's got to happen with him, and he knows this, is that the condition's got to be pushed past the point. Like, um, you know, if he's if he gets in deep enough, um, his back will come in enough, and he that's needs, the key. That is the key to it for him. He, he's, he needs he's to one suffer. Of those people that, he does, and the thing is with him. Um, his, his, his back is the final factor. If he gets the back in and gets all the detail on his back, it'll be finished because we've all seen um, the photos from Vegas and that show in Vegas was probably, if we look at it, it was probably the best of the lot. He was a little bit underdone as far as like flatness goes. He wasn't full enough, but obviously we foregoed that for the condition, you know, and even when you look at that, the, the live stream back, the comments he was getting when he was turning to the rear, I mean, the lady was just going, wow, look at this. I mean, the glutes are strided from top to bottom. You know, he was strided everywhere. And look, he gave up a couple of kilos, I suppose, in fullness to look like that. So if he finds somewhere in between that condition and a little bit extra fullness, I don't think anyone can can do it. Um, but um, James Newcomb, man. Yeah, see, that's, that's – that's, that's, James and it's time him. with him in Thailand, um, a couple, I don't know, a year or two, last time we were there, and he was there training, and he was obviously, I think, post-show or something, and he's a lot bigger in person when he stands there than what you think, eh? Like, mm. he, it, it's a very big, short guy. But we've got a lot of people gunning for their pro cards at this comp, too. So they're not just competing for the sake of competing or trying to win a super heavyweight title. or Like, they're talking about becoming pros. So that's what's going to make mm. this show a lot more. Chris Cavalos is talking about, he, he wants his pro card. Uh, you mentioned Halusi before. He wants his pro card. You've got Timmy who's fighting for his pro card. Newcomb isn't going to waste any more time. He's going to try and win his pro card. Um, Ariel, Mike. Yeah, was, like Pearson, that. 100% Pearson. And I think Pearson will probably fly a little bit under the radar leading up to this comp, maybe. I think he just wants a little well, bit of I, redemption. I, that happening. I think Mike, Mike seems to be that real just deep thinker, low-key, get it done. I, I, is, I think is, I, I can see him going... It's very totally emotional. Quite. He was getting emotional. Do you ever have those emotional moments leading up to a comp? I'm fucking terrible. I'm, I'm, I'm one of those emotional eaters because I, I just lose it and I'll eat a pizza for the hell of it. Yeah. I, I, pretty much, I pretty much rung me every day in that last show that we did together. Remember that? Yeah, you did. That was good. That was yeah, good time. It was good. <laughs> we chat We chat for like an hour. I know. It was, it was either that or eating bread. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Gretch, we've got some good questions. Did you want to read off the questions on our page that Jimmy put up? There's some good ones there. Eh? You read them. Have you got them up? <laughs> Jimmy, you, re- you read them. I'll read them. You're good at it. But Jimmy fucking stutters under pressure. Who? Do you want to give your business a wrap? You should have a fucking banner in the background. There's no. actually a question on his business in it, so that's why it's probably... <laughs> Too busy, don't worry about it. For people that don't know, Jimmy electrocutes people for a living now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, um, one of the, the first things that comes with the pamphlet says, don't put it on your genitals. Oh, yeah, geez. but what's the what's the first question every dickhead asks? No, but I've I've come to the conclusion that what, what's the first question I ask? <laughs> no, no, but I've I've come to legit I've come to the conclusion that the guy that that made this machine he put it on his fucking cock and he's got a big slinger now, right? But he's told everyone to tell to say no, don't do it. It's dangerous because he wants to be the guy with the big cock. Do you understand that? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, it's <laughs> It is. <laughs> so you've tried it. Yeah, I'm the second one with the slinger now. <laughs> <laughs> this is good for okay. business. What we could book in for a session then? Okay. Double price to put on your cock. All right. <laughs> Will Brad Dwight? Brad, this is from Brad. You can answer this, Gretch, because you fucking don't like the kid. <laughs> I love Brad. Don't <laughs> even say that. <laughs> Right, will Brad Dwight ever get the honorary mention he's worked so hard for? Well, he got it. Sorry. No, 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 no. Brad, he got, Brad, a, good, he got a good one tonight. Well, I, I, you know what's funny? Back when, how, how long has it been since we recorded? Yeah. Ten months. It's, yeah, yeah. No, it's been yeah, twelve months. Oh, yeah, no, because we months. recorded a bit through COVID, yeah, mm-hmm. through the lockdown. I promised him that I'll not only give him a mention, but get him on the show. And um, we... 
and then we just stop recording. So next week we'll have Brad Dwight on. And we're not going to ask him the he gay ass. Huh? He already went on Xavier's. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, but we're not going to ask him the generic, oh, tell us about why you got into bodybuilding. Oh, what's your workout split? Oh, we're not going to ask him, how did you diet? What food did you eat? We're not going to ask him boring shit. I don't know. I haven't watched Xavier's show, but I'm assuming Brad, it was pretty boring. Single? <laughs> 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 We get about, and we'll true? ask him real life questions. Yeah, like what do you put in your moustache? Yes. <laughs> Did you practice your routine at home, naked in front of the mirror, while watching porn? Because it was a very big porno type routine. It was very sexual, Gally. You would have loved it. Oh, sure. Yeah, sure. Can we go on with the questions? If you want. No, oh, it's from Amy. Amy. Amy who? Oh, okay. Fuck it. Really? We got people that we know actually commenting. Yeah. I'm nervous. If you could choose one division to add. What? Comp- Start again. If you could choose one division to add a compulsory amount of alcohol to that competitors must consume before hitting the stage, which division would you choose and why? Well, that's a... That's okay, a you want to answer this, Chris? division I'm doing. Hey? I'm confused by the question. No, it's you know, you, we've got three divisions. We've got... We've got bodybuilding, men's physique, uh, women's bikini, women's physique, etc. Yeah? Wellness, whatever. If Who you has can... to do the most moves when, they, when they're posing? The weirdest sort of stuff. No, I'll choose bikini. Yeah, I'll choose bikini. Heads up. How funny would it be watching watching a bunch of girls stumbling in their heels? Correct. Their heels. Like yeah. that. Dude, you know how slutty girls get when they get drunk? Imagine that on stage. In their uh, you can't say that, you dipshit. <laughs> <laughs> I missed it. Edit that out. Oh, I'm gonna have uh, to. I think before bikini you start. Um, just do it. Just do a count, Just do a beat noise as you. No, no. I'm gonna choose. Remember last time I did the chicken. That back on yes. Yeah, we'll do the. We'll bring that back. <laughs> bring it back. Who bring it back. Cover to use the chicken. What? <clears throat> Who did we talk about that we always had to cover? I think it was Ahmed Harachi oh. when we did the split, the NWO split with old yeah, ICB. And we couldn't mention the Grahams, but now we don't give a you fuck. Can you answer the question, please? <laughs> yeah, keep um, going, dude. You're doing good. No, you're doing horribly. Um, oh. well, yeah, I'd choose bikini. Who else? Well, that's actually a pretty funny question, to be honest. Mm-hmm. That's a good yeah, question. Yeah. Jesse Shepard. Good old Jess. <clears throat> you want to read these out? I'll read them. I go. think I remember those ones. He had, he had a couple of good ones in there. Yeah, go. We'll just, just do them one at a time. Okay, Nick Walker. Or blessing for the New York Pro. That's uh, not what you, you went to straight to question four. Yeah, question four. Yeah, I, I don't need to go to the one to five. I can ask them. I That's creepy. Say, That's creepy, Chris. What happened? No, nah, keep it like that. That's fucking creepy. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> What's right? oh, that was good. It looked like. I reckon the power's gone in his gym. Is he? At, is he in the office? They've shut the gym down. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. There we go. There we go. I'm back. It's actually cool. Um, was it good? Disco like? No, no, no. You, you, wait, you wait till you watch it back. You look, was it you like? look, you look creepy. Something yeah. out of the omen. No. Um, Nick Walker so, or blessing for New York Pro? I don't really care. Nah. You're a good promoted, Gretch. No, I just promoted. like I'm not really. I'm not a massive fan of either. Look, blessing. If I had to pick one, I'd pick blessing because. I really like his shape, but I don't. Oh, think, I'm going to go Nick. But I don't think I don't think he'll beat I don't think he'll beat Nick. I think Nick will win, but if I had to choose one who I wanted to win, it'll be Blessing. Yeah, I think Blessing's got some awesome potential there in the next couple of years, and Ooh. he's and he's been prepped by Chad Nichols too, so that'll go down well. Okay. Um, I'll yeah. ask Chris this one. <laughs> Thoughts? And this is it's a serious question because I want a serious answer. I can't get one from fucking Greg. Thoughts? On an all Australian men's bodybuilding pro show at the end of the year. Thoughts on it? Yeah. Well, do you think? Do you think we could? Like, do you think Tony could pull it off? Not Tony's, but do you think we have enough talent in Australia to be able to do it? You've got Christian Caldwell. You've got Nathan yeah. Jones Williamson. You've got Brad. You've got. Keep going. Who else? They'd have to all commit. Josh. That's the thing. You've Logan. got Josh. You've got Logan. You've got Sam. Aaron. You've got... Sam. Who'd you say? Sam. Sam. Yes. You've got... Um, fuck it. The one just left my hand. Oh, 
Um, not Jake. Back. Just, Justin could make a comeback. Yeah. Justin's never making a comeback. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, you've you got the depth. Um, it'd be nice if the borders are open and um, you can get New Zealand athletes in there too. That's just me being biased. Yeah. So um, it'd be nice to do both. How many uh, New Zealand pros are there, two? Well, I don't know. Orton. Yeah, I was with the Mike Kings North too, man, as well. Mate. What happens with the sanction fee? There's a massive sanction fee. I know there's fees, but I, I do do honestly think that that's what people don't understand. Like there's there's it's tens of thousands of dollars involved in running a pro show for each division. And obviously bodybuilding is the most expensive division that you have to pay a sanction fee for. And then you've got to throw in prize money. They cheap. Do you, who, do you think, who, who do you think would win? Out of that lineup, Aussies. Then, it, it, who do you think would win that? Between it'll be between Jake, Jake and Josh. Yeah, between between those two. But Dude, don't put Nathan in that. Nathan's looking big, man. If yeah. Nathan, if, okay, if, if Nathan had a good prep, I I could almost see myself picking Nathan exclusively. At, at a at a Josh at his best and Jake at his best. Nathan's looking good. Nathan's looking oh, good. Dude, I'm, I can't say no, but I, I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no. You'd, you'd probably say they would be top three. At the same time, you've got to look at, I mean, obviously, Josh. I mean, if Josh and Shake's going to going to win, yeah. it, you know, that's it. But if you go based on last year's efforts, potential efforts and all the rest of it, you'd be a fool to go. Look, and Nathan's got potential untapped. But based on what we saw last year, Jake would be very, very difficult to get around. You know, if if Josh wasn't in the in the road, that's my opinion. You can't forget Sam. Yeah, you can't forget Sam. No, no. Sam, course, yeah. Sam, Jake, Josh, uh, Nathan. Like that's a quality top four. Yeah, but then you got Aaron too. Who's yeah, he's two twelve, but Aaron can fucking hold up against the bigger guys too. That's yeah. a good five. How about instead of buying a watch, a season B, you put it towards a sanction fee. You're the one that just bought the fake Rolex, and you're talking about me buying a watch. That's a, so it cost me two hundred fifty dollars. Why don't you put your twenty five k that you made? <laughs> Shut up! I haven't even season B. Yeah, <laughs> seen the scene. The moral to the story is, is that Australian bodybuilding's in a pretty good spot. <laughs> Are you talking about the pros? Yeah. Although you're yeah. talking about financially, then. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, hundred percent. It really is, but but we do. If you had have asked that question two years ago, you probably wouldn't have been able to run a show. But now we have Christian Caldwell's in there. Um, we're forgetting a lot. You've got a teeth. Jake, Jake just had, I think Jake just had this graininess last year that I don't think we've, you know, many people have, have, have reached. You know what I mean? I think that's the big thing that I keep looking at. So you, You've got Gary Wright. You've got – what happened to um, Big A? Sam, Sam's a – too, man. Don't forget that. You know, Sam, Sam gets on stage probably close to 120 or something, doesn't he? So, but but yeah, Sam's, yeah. Sam's been growing, yeah. Sam's 138 yeah. now. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And he's not Enormous. fat. No. He's not fat. And he's another one that's deceivingly not as tall as what he looks like in his picks. Exactly right. Yeah. So, yeah, fuck. Sam would – yeah, you can't not count Sam in your top three. No, that's, that, that would be good. Go next question, Jimmy. <clears throat> next question. Do you want to do uh... – you, you want me to – Okay, I'll do one. Who who is everyone's top pick for the pro card in October? Because apparently all us here don't know what we're talking about. So you said that we don't know what we're talking about. See what you're doing there, Mick. What's that? I said I see what you're doing there. <laughs> well, apparently. I'm standing I mean, I think why don't why don't we know what we're talking about? Chris, don't you act know? like a duck. <laughs> I just wanted to say it. Listen, we've already discussed it. I'm I know everyone's gonna suck Tim's dick. So I'm going to go James Newcomb. Oh, I'm stuck on James and, and Timmy. Oh, yeah, yeah, well, if you can pick two, I'm going to go Timmy too. Oh. You've got to pick one, uh, Mick. you got to pick one. It's, fuck, it's hard, isn't it? Because you don't want to... You've got to okay, you got to take my... It's not about upset. I, 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 I think James, at this stage, I think James. All right, listen. James at his best when he was up against Jake. Against fun. Tim, when he was at his best in Vegas, who wins? Ooh. If, if, you know James, if James's upper body, and this is being hypercritical, 
okay, because he's that good. If his upper body is as balanced or more balanced now with the bottom end, he's going to be very difficult to beat. But you're saying he was right? top heavy. If, 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 if there is an imbalance between upper and lower, as in the lower is more dominant still, then, oh, okay. yeah. you know, I thought, you were saying, I thought you were saying the upper was more dominant. Hey, I was going to say, no. No, no, no. no yeah, of course yeah. not. So, who's your pick? Gally? McKinnon's is pick. my pick. It's a, it's a tough up. one. I, I did. It, I, I think James. probably going to be the same as the overall between uh, Mike Pearson and uh, and Brad Dwight. Yeah, and that's, that's what's good about it. Yeah. You, can pick, you, can pick, you can pick back and forth between the two, but um, McKinnon's very big in person. Very big. I've never seen him look this big, and he's in shape. So, That's the thing, too. If you're basing your decision on past shows, mm. McKinnon is considerably bigger, and no one mm. – James James is pretty low-key on his socials, and we don't know him personally as well as we do Tim. So we don't know what he's looking like. He could be looking like a fucking rock ape at the moment. We don't know. But um, Mate, one thing certain that James Newcomb, when he wins his pro card, when is the thing, um, he will go on, as I said, to be a, an incredible 212 pro, full stop. He is Flex Lewis type. Mm-hmm. He he could be it's the next Flex Lewis, yeah. Put, the way he's put together, the, the way the whole bottom end's put together, it's it's pro like already. I mean that that um, the Arnold's with him and um, Jake, it was just incredible watching that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the next question? So we're two and two. So we got James and James. Yeah, we're split like we were the overalls. Yeah. So it's gonna be a good overalls. Tim, Tim, I know you're watching this tomorrow. You know who your mates are, yeah? Oh, he got <laughs> cool. Uh, Is Tim actually doing the show? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next question. Do we want to do Olympia predictions or it's way too early, eh? Way too I'm early. predicting mine now because I think he's in. I, I reckon Sean Roden's going to win it. Uh, can oh. I tell you, Kai Green's competing too. Yeah, he is. I, yeah, I think pretty, he signed it the other day, yeah. didn't he? Kai Green and Sean Roden. Wow, what a show this is going to be. Oh. We're gonna figure. We're gonna sacrifice the. No, nah, we're gonna sacrifice the two. You know what we gotta do, Bart Gally? If we can't go to wherever it's gonna be, Orlando, Vegas, wherever, we're gonna get together for the weekend and watch it together. <laughs> Something up with that? Something's. Uh, oh, Jimmy, what's going on? What the fuck are you talking about? You're gonna be here in in, in no, no, Australia. No, 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 I don't know where I'm gonna be. No, he's being genuine. He's he's. He, yeah, okay. I'm no, no, saying no, no. we make it we make it a cool weekend where we get whoa, together and whoa, whoa, Jimmy's whoa. Redux. I wasn't being aggressive. Don't even start there. Whoa. <laughs> he, he's, being, he's being genuine, but I'm being a realist, and that's probably not the best idea to be able to watch the Olympia in that state. No, no. Okay. If I, if I'm here, let's all get together for Olympia and watch it. And we'll do a live commentary and we can post that. But I don't know how that's going to come out, but we'll give it a go. No, that's my prediction. Sean Roden. Yeah, I'd say Sean. I'd say Sean if he's competing, I reckon, yeah. But how, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say Roly. Can I say, ask you, because I don't know. I didn't know that he's, how, how do you know that he's doing it? Sean Roden. Yeah. I, I don't know for 100% sure, but I think Jake Wood's, the, the new owner, obviously Jake Wood, who put on last year, I, I think there's a better possibility of Sean doing it this year. Um, How's his conviction go going? What's, what's happening with that? It's still on hold because of COVID. It's almost three years. That's bullshit. Jared Hayden got done. He's done and dusted. Yeah, but he well, actually committed the crime. Apparently, yeah. What, uh, did, what, he, he could get up to 14 years, couldn't he? Yeah, 14 years. Wow. Oh, so, talk about being on top of the world and then just... Years, he, right? he was playing in America. No, 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 no. no. Jared Hayden, you don't, you don't follow rugby league, do you? Uh, he, he, he went down. He went down on a cheek to aggressive. No, no, we can say it because he's been convicted, so you don't even have to say it. Allegedly, he bit a cheek's clit off. What? Is that what he did? I, I, I heard there was an injury, but you're gonna watch what you say. You're a professional now, Jimmy. Professional what? Dickhead. What's the next question? Backstage, backstage person at the biggest show in Australia. What's the next question? Okay, I'm gonna get it up. Do you know what, what happened, what? Gally? Do you know what happened? We, we had, it was um, our posing clinic, and I had Channel 10 come. They were filming a documentary, and um, they were asking me to give them, uh, what was his name, the, the guy running the documentary? I already forgot his name, but he runs that Body Hacks. He's a pretty famous guy. Anyway, so they wanted to run a documentary, and they wanted to feature bodybuilding, and they asked me if I could recommend some bodybuilders to come on the show and some female athletes, blah, blah, blah. So I told him the best people to talk to and the best people that'll be a good representative for the sport. 
Jimmy told the chick who was basically the organizer of this that he runs a New South Wales show. And I <laughs> and I let it go. I let it go. I just I'm gonna see where this goes. So I'm getting messages from this chick. Hey, I just asked Jimmy if we can rock up at this time. And I just and, I just, and then she's kind of like, "Why are you ignoring my my, my messages? Look, like I was really busy." Um, but I'm just Jimmy's assistant. Why didn't you just go straight to the source? <laughs> he legit told her that. He, like, so you know, he's been taking the piss here. Like, oh, I run the show. It's my show. Run. He did that to her, but she thought it was legitimate. And I just sat back and I'm just see how this goes. Yeah, legit. I said, I didn't even tell you, Jimmy, on the message. I sent you the screenshot. Because then she was like, oh, we just checked with Jimmy to make sure it's okay if we can rock up at 8 a.m. And <laughs> yeah, whatever. That might um, been- I didn't really mean to word it like that. <laughs> what was the question anyway? What's the next question? I want to know um, if you're going to make a comeback. Why? Because That's I mean, one of the questions, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I said, and this is 100% the truth, I will make a comeback the day that all of us can be on stage in the same lineup. Well, you better hurry up. Done. Why? Done. Well, I mean, when do you want me to do a show when I'm 60? No, 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 yeah. no, no. Well, it'll have to be when me and Jimmy turn 40. Yeah. Uh, Mark, if we all did a show season B, who, w- would you beat everyone? In the everyone, season? hands down, without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> no, no, be serious. How would you beat Chris? Uh, legs. Lower body, destroyed. Destroyed. <laughs> legs and chest. Legs and chest. The best, best chest in Australia. Best chest in Australia. You know, back, back in the day when you used to compete, that's now considered... Off-season condition today. I know. No, 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 you laugh, Chris, but it's very true. <laughs> it's my way. Yeah. No, don't worry. I can suffer. I can make myself suffer. I know what's what's necessary, Jimmy. Yeah. At least he's honest. I like that, Chris. How would you? How would you beat me, but Chris? How would you beat me? Um, I don't know. Exactly. Um, no one does. Mind game. Is- <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good at the mind games, but I reckon yeah. I can fuck with your head more than you can fuck with mine. I'll, I'll, be, I'll just be on stage and say, listen, don't bother doing this pose. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Imagine how much fun we would have, but I'd be ridiculous. Let's, oh, bro, it would be so much fun. I reckon we'd sell some tickets. Imagine reaching around, just grabbing his trunks and pulling them up his ass. <laughs> you know what's going to be? Imagine how much how annoyed the judging panel would get at us just fucking around the whole time on stage. Yeah, Boona would get frustrated. He'd just go, boys, in line. Oh, it disqualify everyone. I'd yeah, organise it so everyone was in on it where we all stood on our tipping toes in the front of a bicep except for Gally to make him look so <laughs> <laughs> what I don't already is. Rich, I'm tall. So <laughs> how long do you boys are 40? I'm 40 next year. Are you what? When did that happen? Yeah, I know, bro. It's fucking depressing. What? When I was messaging you guys today about you turning 50 and then in my head I worked it out and – um. Yeah, well, I've turned 39 this year. In October. It seems like yes. It seems like yesterday when you were carrying that box of um, muscle meals and you were obese. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> it only seems like yesterday. Yeah. Do you know how much? Do you know how much business that generated for them with the before and after? No, um, none, none at all. Uh, <laughs> And then you pulled out. I didn't pull out. Yeah, you did. You went to Sydney instead. Yeah, because I live, I live in Sydney and my family wanted to see me compete because they saw me on stage for about 30 seconds at the um, that pro qualifier. Remember that show? With Gary oh, Wright won it. It was literally 30 seconds that we were off stage. That was, yeah. I remember that show. That was the last one before it was Arnold, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, FedEx. Yeah. Um, they never had another two twelve qualifier after that. That was it. That was the one and only, wasn't it? One and only, and it was good too. That would have drawn. That would have. Why didn't they do it? Because um, it turned into the Arnold's after, and then it wasn't part of the Arnold's. Actually, here's one for you then, Gretch. Here's a here's a question. The expo. Yeah. What's going on? It's called. Any, fit. Anything you can talk about? Hey, but Gretch, you listen. Going back to how I beat you, didn't I beat you in our last outing? What well, when I got disqualified? Well, I don't know. You had horns in your shoulders, but you didn't get disqualified. Yeah, that's it wasn't... what you had to sit, I did. I beat him. Fuck, I can't believe I forgot that. All right, if, you want to talk about, if you want to talk about Sith, I do want to show everyone both our delts right now, and then we'll see what looks suspect and what doesn't. Who, me or you? Or Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> look at him right now. You look like SpongeBob SquarePants with a head. 
You are a fucking fridge. You are completely square. Are you upset that I'm that much bigger than you? <laughs> Not Dude, necessarily. This is what you do, eh? <laughs> <laughs> to make yourself fucking feel better. All right? How about bringing up your friends? How about making them feel good about themselves? Do you know what? Do you know what? When we went to that fucking awesome night last Friday night that you organised, the boxing night, and we were walking out, <laughs> you were in front of me, and the security guard at the door was like, "Hey, pull your side and get fuck your big bro." And then I walk, and then I walked behind you, and I was like, "The fuck am I?" <laughs> he's just the, he's just the only big one here. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> you got you, you to come to the conclusion, Mark, that you're not big because you're not a hundred kilos. <sighs> No, nah, I'm back <laughs> over. I'm back over. I did drop under, but I'm back no, over. No, actually, I take that back because Chris looks big and Chris is under 100 kilos. So what the fuck is wrong with you? You're fat. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, what was the question anyway? Because um, he just got some insights on the expo. Like, is, is, there, is the army called... coming back? Or without international travel, they're not coming back. Yeah. And I don't but, think okay, I, yeah. I can't talk out of school because I know Tony knows, and I don't know as much as what Tony knows. But all I know is it, it's not going to be the Arnold's this year. It's going to be uh, Fit Fest. Yeah. So it's going to be a fitness Fit, expo. It will be an expo. Fit Oz. I said Fit Fest, Jimmy, not Fist Fest. So relax. No, but um, you're wrong. It's Fit Oz Fest. Fit Fest Oz, dumbass. Same shit. No, <laughs> it's Fit Fest. That's what it's called. It's Fit Fest, but they've, yeah, bring it a Fit Fest Oz. And that, yeah. So it'll yeah. basically be the same thing as what the Arnold's was without. All of the other sports, so I'm pretty sure they're just going to be the powerlifting, something else, and uh, the bodybuilding. Yeah. So without yeah. Arnold as well. Without Arnold, obviously. Just Sam Pearson. What? Oh, because he looks like Arnold. Yeah. Walking around with one double white. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's that's that. So that's what's happening in Melbourne this year, the convention mm-hmm. center, the first weekend of November. Yeah. Oh, so that's not going to be run with the show. Yes, with the nationals. Yeah. Pro qualifier. Okay. Yeah, so the pro qualifier will be that weekend. So your your show is four weeks before that. So it's Queensland. Queensland, Queensland is. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so is New South Wales. Oh, so so Queensland's, Queensland's a Saturday, New South Wales is a Sunday. So does that mean there's going to be a lot of people holding themselves back for nationals at the state shows? Yeah, uh, that's you know, dumb. Listen. You know what? Here we go. We're going to open a can of worms up here with this one. No, I'm peaking for what show? Well, guess what? <laughs> Seriously, like, let's be fair here. There's probably about two or three people in the country good enough to hold themselves back to peak for a show. Just get in fucking shape and be the best you can every and, show. And, and, and saying that, Chris, too, do you hear, like, there's a lot of pro shows with pros competing that are a couple of weeks apart where they have to travel internationally and then do another show next weekend. And these are the same people that want to get a pro card. If you can't peak four weeks out from a nationals and then peak again, then you're not going to make a very good pro. So yeah, no, like, no you, either do, you either do four weeks or you do one week. I think both of those are the ones. So you're four weeks out, you can do it, you can put some more food back in, you know, train a bit more and whatever, or you can do one week out, just go straight back into the routine again and go through it again. I find two weeks and three weeks the awkward periods. Personally. Yeah, I think four weeks is plenty of time to – yeah, 100%. Yep. I reckon four weeks is actually ideal. Agreed. That's yeah. why it was good. We, we are four weeks. I looked at them, well, at least we're not fucking two weeks or something. That's Two weeks is awkward, eh? you got kind of a week. You kind of want to put a bit of food back in. You can, and then all of a sudden you've got to go back in again. And it's, it gives you, it gives your body enough time to um, – I can't remember who I was talking to. It was someone who – oh, it was Chase, big Chase. Yeah. And he said that he had a week between his last shows, and he, he did three shows. The first week, he – between the first two shows – he figured it out and, and nailed it both shows. And then he did the same thing the week after and his body just didn't respond the, the way he did the week before. So mm-hmm. the, I know what you're saying. The four, the four weeks is ideal because it gives you plenty of time to actually make a mistake and fix things up if you need to. But yeah, that's a, that's a plan anyway, Gally. And um, yeah, and a lot of people too that, that, that do end up complaining about um, the, the four week gap, like they, people have got to understand too that a lot of venues have actually gone bust because of COVID. Mm-hmm. they've gone bust because a lot of the venues were in, in universities that made no money from international students or anything like that. So um, venues are very hard to come by and booking them for New South Wales, I now have to book them three years in advance. That's no. New South Wales alone. Yeah. yeah. They've gone bust. 
So let's recap on that anyway. I love how you just cut Jimmy off. Keep going. That was the best. Sorry. Oh, sorry, Jimmy. No, no, no. Don't, don't apologise. He's a dickhead. Um, the moral of the story is be in shape for every show. Never mind this. I'm peaking for this show. Shut the fuck up. Yes. That's it. Jimmy, did you want to say something? Back me up. <laughs> Next question. Gally. I, 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 I'm out of the page. I didn't look at it. Okay. Did you get blocked? We, mind, mind you, we've, we've been going for an hour and 20 minutes. That's nothing. Hour and nine. No, 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 no. We'll wrap it up soon. Uh, Olympia predictions. Will Gretsch ever compete again? Blah, blah, blah. Will my calves ever grow? Trump discuss. We don't need to discuss Trump, do we? Well, hang on. Um, no, nah, here's, here's a legit question. If only uh, he was Training there. through injury versus not training and resting the injury. Training through an injury it versus not training. It depends how bad the injury is. If yeah, it's just it's a knee injury, you can I train didn't through. Train. Huh? When I did my tricep. Yeah, that's no. I yeah. couldn't train. No. You couldn't oh, train. Did you do one side of your body? No. Nah, what for? It's fucking shit. Yeah, but I had the press for you. None. I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. You were so depressed. No, I, no, I fucking Chris, was. was he depressed? No. <laughs> Chris? All, all I did, I just nailed, I nailed my diet and I did cardio every morning. I remember that's you were good on your diet. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you should train. I think you just do nothing and rest. But if it's if it's just a little niggling injury, you can you just train through it. Oh, if it's a niggle, just come see me. I'll use my machine. You'll be back. But yeah, if it's, if it's, it's a too much time. of an open-ended question. If you've tra- if you've injured your lower body, you're not going to stop training your upper body, and Why vice not? versa. I didn't train legs. I tore my tricep. Yeah, but you were fat and lazy, and you depressed. Fat. I'm currently fat and lazy. Uh, <laughs> All right, what the he- what the hell is Jimmy's new contraption? His sex machine. What? The hell is Jimmy's new contraption looking like you're training straight out of a hospital bed, but really hearing the benefits and it would go all right. Can I say something about your machine before you do? Yeah. People that haven't used it don't really have a right to be saying it doesn't work because it fucking works. It's such a good machine. And no one has ever said that it should replace anyone's current training methods. And I was the first to say this to you because I'm always brutally honest with each other. And I said, if I use this machine, I would use it to complement my current training regime. It wouldn't replace it. I've replaced it. You've replaced it because you're fat and lazy. But I'll 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 say that in I've only replaced it so I can learn more about it. Yeah. Yeah, but you still see the importance. Explain what it is first, and then we'll we'll discuss it. The neuromuscular re-education tool. Yeah, but so, to explain but the re-education it's, part. It's, it's a rehab thing, yeah? But from all good rehab things, like fucking steroids with AIDS, bodybuilders use them, right? So it's literally, you can halve your load, increase your contraction, elicit 100% of muscle fibers, and get as good as a workout as you will ever get in half the time. Therefore, and, and you, save, you save the stress on your joints. Your, your joints aren't... Uh, What's it called? Your, your joints aren't load bearing because you're using your whole muscle fiber. You're using 100% of your muscle tissue. So you don't have to use crazy loads. You can turn up the intensity, increase your contraction, etc. So it's good to complement your training, like you just said, or if you've got a lagging body part that you haven't got good muscle connection with, you can get that. If you've got if you've got a strain or, or, or something that doesn't feel right when you're training or you can't do hack squats because there's something's going on on the back of your knee, it can retrain that link between your that muscle or that area and your brain because it mimics as a brain signal. It doesn't replace it, but it, it, it can work as a rehab as much as it can work to increase your training. You know what I mean? So like that's like what a lot of people don't know. When you train, you only ever use about 75% of your muscle fibers. Like that's everyone across the board. An elite Olympian might use 80%, right? This elicits 100% of muscle contraction. That's why the DOMS on everybody are so bad. I'll let the cat out of the bag, right? It's like, if you just take yourself right now and think back to the first workout you ever did, but you trained the way that you trained. <laughs> you took my saying. That's how I described it. That was what the next thing I was going to say. You just took the words out of my mouth, you prick. That's because I'm a mind reader too. <laughs> <laughs> this machine no, does that. Seriously, that's like so, the best. That's this seriously the best way to describe so it. You're twenty five percent of your muscles and training them for the first time really fucking hard. So the doms are that bad. 
I've been training on it for like six weeks straight now, and my my muscle soreness would be the same as if I was like killing myself in the gym, day in day out without it. So it, it does get back to normal. So, when, when's your website up, Jimmy? Hopefully, middle of the next month. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just saying to anyone, give it a crack before you even think about criticizing how well it works or how it works at all, because. I can understand, and how many times have I said to you, Jimmy, don't, don't post this yet because you're going to have so many people just call bullshit. But that, mm. that thing has done a lot of good for people already. And um, one thing that it did for me, I had a knot in my back since fucking 2012. And I shit you not. And I remember that year because I could see the knot clearly on my rear double bicep on stage. And it's the same knot in the same position. And I've had it dry needled. I've had it every single treatment you could think of, scraping, uh, deep tissue, anything and everything. Um, to get this knot out. I could never get it out. I did one back session and we put the pad right over that thing and um, it was gone. It was literally gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The machines have different frequencies and what the different frequencies do, they can either make you contract your muscle harder or you can go on the other extreme and it stops you from being able to contract your muscle. It's called a lengthening frequency. That's your rehab frequency. So you can go through your movement and your your muscles are unable to contract and the ones around it. So it promotes blood flow to the area and loosens up the whole area. So you've got free range of motion for that area. Mm. So like, it looks- Jimmy, I, I saw that, I saw the guy, one of your stories, the older guy that was having trouble walking and you had it all hooked up to his leg. Yep. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty cool. That sort of stuff as well. So, 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 the, so this guy, this guy, he's, um, he watches the show. Actually, he's from Canberra. He's been following us for years. His dad had a stroke for four, his dad had a stroke four years ago. Okay, for three and a half years, his dad's been going to a physio for four days a week. Okay, and when he rolled through the doors, <laughs> literally rolled, um, he could move his hand like this much on the right hand side of his body and had no feeling. Right, I think I've seen him three times for ninety minutes a session. He's ne- and he's now got feeling in his whole right side of the body, and we had him up last weekend walking on a walker. That's one cool. step, one step, one step. He went about twenty meters nonstop. So, like, but Jimmy, you're gonna get so many fuckwits out there that's gonna call bullshit on that. That's fine, I, and I don't care because you can believe me or not. But all I know is his fucking family have like a chance for their dad to walk again. I don't give a fuck what anyone else thinks. No, good. That's a, the best right. mindset to be. In. But like, like, I spoke to the bloke's son, and when I was speaking to him, I didn't even know that mm. it was his son that I was speaking to. And the bloke had tears in his eyes. <laughs> you know how good that made me feel, a little knowing that, that huh? To be to be fair, if I saw that and I just got to explain that story, I'd probably say that's bullshit too, because it sounds fucking like a little bit far fetched. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, but we're not saying that you're Jesus and you're you're, you're making you're, you're cure. <laughs> you're not curing fucking. Jesus yeah, coming out of fitness Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm doing. That's actually <laughs> no, Be careful what you say. I'm doing the um yeah that's a claim that's a claim well, I'm doing crucifix curls okay right? and then underneath the hashtag fitness Jesus <laughs> fucking dangerous waters what's the next <laughs> question oh, I read that one out eh? yep um should be one more he's got cryptocurrency we're not going to talk about that shit Nick Walker Olympia predictions that's it we're done let's wrap it up a good first episode after a year are we and- back next week. It depends if you are. I'm not sure about we you. We are. With, uh... I'll schedule this in every week if you commit now. Yeah, we do. Listen, we need to. We got. We either need to figure out how we're going to have five people on the show, or go to Zoom. Go to Zoom. We'll figure it out. We're using um, Skype at the moment. Put some of that check that you got from the season A show and make a new logo and make a new intro. <laughs> yeah. Th- oh, Gretch, thanks for sending that jumper too. Oh, fuck. Did I not send it? it? It got down to minus 15 degrees a couple of days. Until yeah, we know, we know. We know. We know. You I know what? I, I promise you I'll send it now because the postage is going to be so much cheaper. You don't need it. No, we're coming into winter now in Queensland. He let me down, Jimmy. Yeah. I fucking I, forgot. I, 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 I fucking forgot. I just remembered. Man, oh, you just remember. There you go. Shut up. I like your shirt too. Well, Jim, represent. Hey? Galley over in the snow. Fuck Galley. What was that? Yeah, he did. He probably got. You know what? I'm not ah, sending yeah, that man. jumper at all. No, nah, man, I miss Kelly. I miss Kelly. There's not I'm many. No, there's not many people in the world that I miss, but I missed him. Even right. though he still spoke every day. Let, let's see. Let's see if we can get this newer fit into this hotel. We'll get it through the security. 
We'll do it. Do a, I need to do something here. Oh, the newbie. Imagine doing that in quarantine for two weeks. The fucking newbie on a different body part every day. What do you mean? You do it every day. You just become jacked. You break through the wall. You die. You die. I could have let you the security guard. The funniest, the funniest was when Timmy McKinnon, the, after doing legs, the <laughs> next day, the next day, was like, bro, my legs are killing me. He's walking up the stairs going, my legs are killing me. This is the worst times I've ever felt. And I laughed. I said, you wait till not tomorrow where they're going to be worse. Not the next day, but the day after that. Because yeah, that's like the fourth day. You, I, and my missus sent him a photo where I laid in bed the entire day. I was in excruciating pain. Do you remember how he only did three exercises for the first workout, yeah? For yeah. Legs? I put Timmy through his full workout. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well. Um, nah, nah. All right, let's wrap it up. Good first uh, show. If you are, uh, I want to say a big thank you to all our sponsors. Crickets. I put crickets. <laughs> Cricket noises there. Keep <laughs> your money coming. <laughs> um, now nah, it's good talking to you. And hopefully we didn't offend too many people because that's the first thing I get paranoid about. As soon as we stop recording, I'm no, like, no, no, no. You, you know what? This was this was us G-rated this episode. I think. I think we were very well behaved. Yeah, Jimmy wasn't yeah. G-rated. I was all right. You spoke it's about good to, how slutty do. drunk girls get. A girl getting her clip bitten off. Um, what else did you speak about that I have Tell to? Tell me one why I said all facts. <laughs> See you later. Thank you very much for listening and watching. Bye. <laughs>